Hello Flosstube, welcome to Annemiek from the Handwerk Boutique. My name is Annemiek and this is the Handwerk Boutique. I'm the owner of a cross stitch shop in the northern part of the Netherlands and we are going to be in business for 18 years in November this year so it's very exciting. I'm very happy to see you again. Thank you to all my viewers who have come back and thank you to new viewers and new subscribers. I hope you like what you're seeing here. This is a video about cross stitch, maybe a little bit about life, but about 90% cross stitch. Um, it's my passion. It's something I've done since I was a little girl. I think I started stitching when I was four or five years old. My mom taught me and it's been a constant in my whole life. I've stitched through um, school, through high school, for my study time uh, when I started working I've always been stitching and um, in 2002 I decided to take the jump and start my own needle workshop. Um, over the past couple of weeks this has taken me a little longer to video than I originally thought but on August 5th a heat wave started here in the Netherlands and it lasted way past August 18th. I think the official ending date was August 18, but it was still uncomfortable and humid afterwards. And you have to realize that over here, if we got temperatures of over 30, 35 degrees, most of our houses have windows instead of aircos. So we have windows that can open, but no airco, which means that it gets really, really warm. Three, four, five days you can probably manage, but after that it gets, I would say horrible, but there are more horrible things in the world than that. It's just that I don't do very well with the heat. Um, so for me, anything above 25 degrees, which I think is like 75, maybe 80 degrees Fahrenheit, is enough for me. Anyway, we have passed that. Um, the weather is much cooler now. I don't know if you can see it here but there's no sunshine at the moment. It just rained a little bit ago. It's much, much cooler, which to be honest, I kind of like. I know that a lot of people love the summer to be sunny and hot and warm. And um, like I said, I don't deal well with the heat. So for me, 20 degrees is perfect. Anyway, uh, aside from the weather update, um, the consequences were that I didn't stitch a whole lot during that time because it was just too hot to stitch in the evening. Um, and then I thought I've got nothing to show. So I, I, I figured out I could better wait a couple weeks to make a video and show you some new stuff. I have one finish. I worked on, I think like five whips. Uh, I have an old uh, sampler that I stitched some years ago to show you. And I thought it would be nice to introduce some more designs of Historische Stickmuster, the German design ladies that did the awesome American Homes chart. Uh, they have incredibly nice charts. This one here, that's Farben des Wassers. It's one of their Farben um, series, um, no. Farben des Wassers is one of a series that they're doing. Uh, all charts start with the word Farben, which means colors. And this one is color of water. Um, a friend of my mom stitched it. It's beautiful. I really, really enjoy it that we have it hanging here in the shop. We have stitched some of the other charts of um, Historische Stickmuster but um, those models are in storage at the moment so i can't show them to you anyway uh, i thought i would show some of their latest charts so that you have an idea of what else they have besides the american homes and i have an update on my american homes project so to start with i finished my itty bitty christmas sampler by kathy barrick this is it it is stitched on 46 count Bergen linen. Uh, the Bergen linen is the linen from Zweigert that is not completely, um, that's not woven completely squarely. So you have 46 threads this way and 41 this way. 
Now, um, the original was stitched on the Bergen linen as well. And just to give you an idea, these are some scissors. So it's, I think, a little under maybe like four inches by three, three and a half. It's really tiny. I love how it turned out. I must admit, I'm glad it only took two collars because I don't know if I would enjoy stitching on this count so much if it had multiple colors, but this was very doable. It's a lovely little design. I really enjoyed the quirkiness of the alphabet. I have no idea why the original stitcher started with the K. I mean, you would figure she'd start with the A. And from the photo that Kathy included with the design, it doesn't look like part of it had been cut off, which was what I thought originally. It's not. So this is it. And I think I'm going to finish it pretty much the same way that Kathy did. Maybe I'll uh, put it on a piece of um, acid-free cardboard and then attach it to a, you know, like an open frame with some scrapbooking paper behind it. So we'll see. But this is my finish, which is really nice. Well, it's really nice. Anyway, I got that done. And then um, I'm really into the mood of stitching some Pookie designs. Now, the lovely ladies from Twin Peak Primitives, they did Pookie and Seasons for me. However, that chart calls for more than 10 colors. And there are times in the evening when I cannot handle too many color changes. Plus, combined with the heat, I was just not feeling comfortable starting it. Um, I got the fabric sorted out. I've got the floss sorted out. And I think what I'll do is um, I have this um, huge bag of whips slash kitted up projects. Um, that I have upstairs and I thought maybe I'll do a whip parade again. I did it at the very beginning, but things have changed a little bit. I threw out some whips. You could see that you hear about that in the last video. Um, I have worked on some that I may not have shown or you may have forgotten about it, which is perfectly fine. Uh, but I thought it would be fun to go through that bag and all my Pookie in Seasons materials are in there. And my idea is that I'm going to start, um, let's see, what is that? August 29th. So that's the this coming Friday. And the reason for that is that at the end of Friday, my summer vacation starts. So I thought it would be really cool to stitch on Pookie and Seasons during my vacation time. I'm hoping, since I'm not going away, uh, that I have a lot of stitching time. <laughs> we'll see how that ends up, but never mind. My my goal is to stitch at least three hours a day. For me, that is an incredible amount of time. And um, I do hope that I'll be able to finish one of the Pookie and Seasons seasons. I'm going to start with the summer one because, well, we just came out of a heat wave and I think September officially is still summer. So Let's see what I can do and then take it from there. Um, so that's for next time. In the meantime, since I did want to stitch on something not as complicated, I started working on Theodore by Stacy Nash. I have loved this cat since she came out with a chart. The little bag he has around his, um, his body, I think is adorable. And he really looks a lot like Pookie as well. Now, originally I thought this was gonna be very easy because I can just do all the kind of like orangey, uh, rusty color. But if you look at the design, you can see that there are white spots. So I still had to pay quite a bit of attention to not stitch the white spots because I'm gonna fill them in later on. Anyway, this is how far I got. And I still have to fill in the white here and here and here. And I have to finish the other part of his head. I decided to wait with his eye because I thought it would look kind of creepy if I stitched one eye and he wouldn't have another one. So I'll just finish his head and then do the eyes. I can't wait to stitch the eyes because I think it's going to really give a lot of character to the design. 
But this, this was so great to stitch. I could go just up and down, up and down, and there was hardly any counting. It was an incredible lot of stitching. <laughs> I'm not one to count stitches, but this baby has a lot of stitches. And it got me wondering if designers would be open to the suggestion to add the amount of stitches on their charts so that once you've done the whole chart, you know how many stitches it has because if you do the dimensional thing, so you multiply the amount of stitches you have horizontally times the ones vertically, you will also count the stitches that are not included in the design. And if you would do something like this, the amount of stitches if you multiplied horizontally versus vertically, it would be insane, whereas the amount of what you really stitch is a lot less. And I know that a lot of computer programs uh, in which you can design your charts will give you the option to give the actual amount of stitches. I thought that would be really cool because then even with something like this, you would be able to just, you know, jot down the amount you've done because I'm not going to spend time, um, you know, keeping track of how many stitches I've done. I, I thought about it and I came to the conclusion that there's no way I'm going to do that. Um, and anyone who does, my hat's off to you. I think it's great. I would love to be able to, you know, say at the end of the year, oh, I've done so many stitches this year. I think that would be awesome. But um, keeping track of it and taking the time to, um, you know, like calculate it. I don't think I would do that. Anyway, a lot of stitches go into Theodore, who I have renamed Pookie. And then I wanted to show you something else because my little red monster has a tendency to chew on plastic, which I find kind of dangerous because I don't want him to swallow anything but he's really into plastic so if I have some plastic laying around he'll go hunting for it it's almost like he can smell it which is crazy because plastic is not supposed to smell at all but to give you an idea of what he does can you see this those are all his teeth he really enjoyed it. This is like a more sturdy kind of plastic file folder in which I keep my projects. And apparently he thought he needed to have a go at it as well. I wasn't too thrilled about it, but well, what can you do? So it made me wonder, do you have a cat that really likes plastic? He will really go looking for it. And um, I've heard my mom has a friend who also has a cat that really is into plastic and I'm like, you know, why? It doesn't make sense at all. Anyway, that was Pookie on his destruction tour. Then, let me get the chart out. An update on American homes. This is the marvelous chart by Historicist Stickmuster. Um, I really, really love it. I'm just, completely crazy over this. It's going to take me a long time to stitch this, but I have figured out that's okay. I'm working on this mostly Sunday evenings, unless it's 30, 35 degrees outside and it's too hot to stitch in the evening, then it's just a no-go. But this is so pretty. And what I find very, very special about it is that the chart only uses 12 colors of swaddles, yay which is the silk you can see behind me, but it's only 12 colors. There are several that you need multiple skeins of. So, um, you know, if you have the chart or if you want to stitch it, you might want to check which colors you need more of, more than one skein of, because um, if you have very old Swadelje, there might be a difference in the dye lots. I know that they changed their dye recipe, I think it was like five or six years ago. So like with DMC, there might be a slight difference in it. Now, of course, unless it looks completely different, um, it's, not, it's not always a problem. I mean, you could do the green in this part 
and it would be slightly different from this green. Um, everybody would just think you, you know, you used another color, so it wouldn't be a problem at all. I started in the lower right corner, and this is how far I got. The colors are a little, I'm trying to find a sweet spot. The colors are a little brighter than you can see on the camera, but it's really, really fun. I added the roofs, I added the windows, um, the greenery around it, and now I'm filling in the house. It's going to be, I don't know if you can see it right here, it has like ecru stitches, which are a little hard to do on the off-white fabric that I chose, but it's going to be filled in with um, like a brick colored red. So I think the house will look awesome in the end. So this is how far I got. Okay, I need to take a little break. Okay, I'm back. I just had somebody at the door. Um, then I started another project. Um, I'm a big fan of the Prairie Schooler Santas. And for the past four years, I've staged her yearly Santa. I've stitched other charts by her. I just think she did an awesome job designing. And her yearly Santa for me is always like, kind of like a treat to stitch. And this year's um, Santa I thought was adorable with the two bunnies hanging on with the north wind blowing. And normally I stitch this in July, so I thought it would be perfect for Jolly July. However, <laughs> It didn't reach the shop until two weeks ago, maybe. And um, originally I thought I would wait until my vacation time started. So it would be a perfect project to do in the vacation. But then with the heat going on and me not working on large pieces, I thought, why not start this one? I stitched all of them on a 25 count natural linen, which makes them a little bigger. And which also makes it really nice to stitch. It's easy on the eyes. And um, I think they're always a lot of fun. So this is the original chart to stitch. And this is how far I got. It's washing out a little bit, but I think you can see it. So I got one bunny done. And I'm now working on this part here. It's just very relaxing to stitch. Um, yeah, I can just, you know, when it's 9 p.m., you can just sit on the couch and pick this up and work on it because it's really, really a lot of fun. Then I started another project. I'm sorry. I, well, I'm not sorry. Um, I told, in the last video, I said that I was going to work on Little Bits of Halloween by The Drawn Fred. But that was the same problem. It's like this long piece of linen. Um, and, you know, I felt like I had sweaty hands at time. I was working with silks. I just didn't want to, you know, take a chance that something would not turn out right. Um, so I put that aside for a little bit. And then I wanted to have some small stuff to work on. So I had wanted to stitch this one, I think, two years ago. I started it on a piece of antique linen, which was over a hundred years old. And while that sounds very interesting and intriguing, it was really hard to stitch on. The linen back then was woven completely uneven. You would have really thick threads, thin ones. Um, the linen had been washed obviously multiple times. So I, you know, I figured I would just restart it on a you know normal piece of linen, a 21st century piece of linen, and so I did. It's and Rudolph by La Di Da. I really really love this chart, and this is how far I got. So this is on 40 count flex, Newcastle linen. It's the Swigert linen, and I'm stitching it. I don't know if you can see it. The original one was stitched with DMC 310, the black. This is uh, VMC 3371, like the really, really dark brown. I'm not a person that enjoys stitching with black threads. So um, I usually um, 
change it to 3799 DMC, which is like a really dark gray, or the 3371, which is the really, really dark brown. I think it looks perfect. I need to add, you know, like borders and stuff and two little reindeer at the top, but it is so much fun to stitch. Those names go so quick. I really, really like it. And then, um, I think it was like three Sundays ago, I had stitched on my Christmas alphabet sampler, the, no, the Christmas sampler, the tiny one, during my um, chat sessions with an Australian friend. Um, so I needed a new project for our chat sessions. And I worked on something that was a whip from last year. So I feel slightly better about this. It's Needles Dance by Hands On Designs, Ink Circles, and Summer House Stitchworks. This was a limited, well, this was an exclusive for a year last Nashville, so Nashville 2019. The shops that participated in the workshop would have the chart exclusive for a year. So we kitted it up for the people that wanted it. And I started it and then it sort of got lost. Well, it didn't get lost, but I forgot about it. And hold on, I need to take a thread. This is how far I, hold on. This is how far I am. I finished the little hill with the word dance. And then I took the border down. I added the motifs in the lower part. And now I'm gonna, you know, work on the border. Um, I wanted to make sure that my border um, was correct at the lower right. So I might just go around now and finish the border and then fill in the lower part of this um, design. It's stitched on a permin linen, which is, as some of you might know, it's a little stiffer than the Zweigart linens. However, the colors that they have are so, so pretty. I'll just fold it so maybe you can see it better this way. It's like a royal blue color. It's 32 count, so I'm stitching it with two strands over two by two threads, and it's very, very pleasant. I have found that if you work on the stiffer linens, um, sometimes my stitches look neater. Um, it's like the threads are more flat somehow. I don't know if any of you have noticed that or if you have a totally different experience. As this one is done with two threads, it's kind of nice that they sort of lay, lay down smoothly next to each other. So that was all that I've been working on. Um, now I'd like to show you some birthday gifts that I got that are pretty amazing. Um, my birthday was two, well, like 10 days ago on the 13th and I got something very special. Oh, let's see, I need to put this together. So my dear friend Kobe gave me this box. It looks like a shaker box and she stitched the top out of the Sewing Club book by Blackbird's Designs. Now, this came from one of the stores we have over here. It's called Sister Anna Grene. It's a Danish store. They're not in every larger city in the Netherlands and sometimes they have these amazing boxes. She bought it just the way it is now, which I thought was amazing. But then I opened it up and inside there was this little pin cushion, which is filled with lavender and it smells lovely. And she made me a little ditty bag. Look at this. And there's a, there's a key and a little um, safety pin. It's my initial, the year. I just love this. I think it is so adorable. So, yeah, a wonderful gift. And now that it's been shown on floss tube, I can take it upstairs and display it in my living room and enjoy it every single time I see it. It's so adorable. Then on the same day, I got a gift from a customer. Her mom and she are 
longtime customers and they phoned to the shop and said, we're gonna drop off a package for Anamik. So I didn't really know anything about it until Kobe had picked it up and she came into the back where I'm doing all the mailing. And she said, well, here's a package for you. And inside the package was this. And at first I thought, oh, how nice. She printed off a photo of Pookie and put it in a really nice frame. But if you look up close, I hope you can see it. She actually drew this. I'm still, if I look at it, I'm like, I don't know how she was able to do it. Even if you look at the ears, it's like they're almost translucent. So what she did, she took a photo that I had posted on the Facebook page of the shop and she drew this. So, and the funny thing is the way he looks, it's so pokey. It's like, what do you need? I'm just laying here and I'm fine. And you know, do not interrupt me. I'll see if I can add the original photo in this video so that you can see it, how exact it is. It's not even close. It's exactly like the photo. So that was very, very special. And then I have an 89 year old aunt. She's turning 90 in October and she stitches like crazy, basically. <laughs> She has her stitching on the table in the living room and she just keeps going and going and going. So the next day when she came over for dinner, she stitched me this. So it's like a mama cat with different kitties and one of them could be Pookie. I really adore this. It's so nice. So all in all, I had a great birthday, as you can imagine, not just because of the gifts. It was just a really nice day. And my family came over on Saturday evening um, to have dinner as the shop was open on Saturday. And I just wanted to make sure that, you know, we had some quiet time to sit. And thankfully, that was the first night evening that it cooled down a bit, that there was a bit of a breeze and we were sitting outside, we had food delivered. It was just a gorgeous evening. So I had a really, really great time. Um, then I have to show you something that I stitched quite some time ago. I think it's like five years, maybe six years. And I thought that since there's, um, at least on the Dutch Facebook groups, there's a lot of interest in darning designs. I thought I would show you this. This is the reproduction of a little antique darning sampler by S. de Meulemeester from 1895. It is adorable. It is such a sweet design. Here's the chart. You got it all kitted up in this really nice file photo. You can just put everything in here. Now, Sabina Tatara from Alta Moestertuger, she reproduces these designs. And I think this one, it's only nine euros. I think it's an incredible price for a lovely darning sampler. Um, I stitched it on 32 count. Um, I would say use two, two strands of DMC. If you go higher on 36, you might get away with one strand of silk. I think one strand of DMC might still be um, not enough. It might not give you enough coverage and the darning um, designs won't come out as well. And on 40 count, you could do, I would probably do one strand of silk. And basically this type of darning, you just go over and under threads. So it's, it's not really difficult. You don't have to cut anything. You just follow the design. And there's like, so, you know, there's maybe like three lines that, um, you know, that you go over three threads and then you go on there two and then you go over three again. And that will give you the motives. Let me show it to you again. It was a lot of fun to stitch. And if you look at the back side, you will see not always exactly the same motive, but like mirror motives. And it's really, it's, it's a lot of fun to do. It's, if you can count, you can pretty much do this. 
So I'll put the link to this design in the description box below because if you want to try darning, this is a very good place to start. Then I was going to show you some more designs by Historicist Stickmuster. Uh, my mom and I met Dorothee and Ute 10 years ago, maybe. We were in a, on a trade show in Cologne and they were there as well. They are the most lovely ladies, very um, distinguished. They know a lot about samplers. And what I really, really admire is that they give it their own twist. So in the past, they have done multiple reproduction samplers, but over the last couple of years, they um, designed their own samplers being inspired by antique samplers. And they have come up with, I find very novel ways to look at samplers and how you can use old motives again. So I'm just gonna share some of my favorites with you. And then the next time, um, I will talk about some smaller designs they've done because uh, we need to get some new stock in before I can tell you about that. Anyway, this is one of their latest designs. It's Quadrate mit Blumen, Blüte. And as you can see, they stitched it in a different colorway on the back. Hope you can see it. Now, what I really like about this kind of design is that you could stitch all nine blocks you could stitch one and turn it into a little scissor fob you could stitch four and turn it into a little pin keep there are multiple ways you can do it or you can stitch just all nine it only uses three colors so it's fairly easy to change them to your own preference and this would look great if you would stitch it in just one color of overdyed linen um, overdyed thread it's just a really really nice design then this one is sort of similar, but it's called Quadrate mit Borten. And they used all kind of uh, band um, motifs, band sample, no, band motifs, to make up these little squares. And again, you can stitch all of it, but you could also stitch like this part of it, or just this. Um, you can turn this into, you know, you could do like three ones like here, or maybe more, and turn it into a bookmark. The, um, I think that's one of the things I really like about their designs. They're so usable. You can just do so many different things. This one um, is shown with black thread on the front, but on the back they show it done on a natural count linen with an off-white thread. And again, this would, would look really, really good if you um, stitched it um, with an overdyed silk. Then... This is an older design. It's called Traumfaden, Dream Frets. And what you cannot see on the picture is that these lines are actually, look at this, where you, like over here, where you take out threads, it's like a hem stitch that you do over here. So the design has all these little bands all these bands are open work. So you cut away threads and then you put two or four together to create the little um, spikes in between. But even if you're like, huh, that's really nice on me, but I'm not gonna stitch this whole hunking piece and then cut threads in the middle, you know, with the risk of cutting the wrong thread, you could just leave it as it is. You can see it's gorgeous the way it is. It's all stitched in one color of Soiree, but again, you can adjust this to your own liking. And um, I think it's a very soothing pattern to designs. It's too big for me, but um, once you get the hang, you know, once you know sort of like the rhythm of this part, you don't need the, the chart anymore. You can just keep stitching. Then this was one of their, um, I think these were like the latest two of their Farben series. So this is Farben Disorients and it's really pretty. I love all the stars in here. It would make a wonderful memory if you've ever been to, you know, like the Middle East or 
kind of a you know any kind of country that would rep be represented by this and then again um you can just stitch four blocks of this and turn it into a pin pillow or stitch one and turn it into a scissor fob or use this band to put on a towel there are so many things you can do with their designs it's amazing and <clears throat> then i wanted to show i've shown this before but i really really enjoy it it's the farb and their needle under which they designed for the retreat we were going to have in june again they do they have such original ideas over here you can barely see it Let me see i don't know if it works but there's like a whole flower design in this border and it reminds it's it's supposed to remind you of the blue delft tiles um from way back i think they did an awesome job so that's the other one and then this one i haven't seen anywhere basically this is i need to check these on das für jede jahr site also this is um this and that for each season so I'm, I'm going to show this up closer here so you can see this this you can always use you could just say this is spring this is christmas um some more christmas but if you would stitch this in like a rusty um orangey color it would look more like a fall design and if you do the birds this bird like they did here it gives it a completely different look so they change they finish them all in little hearts which i think is adorable they have a great way of finishing their stuff so this chart again gives you multiple options of what to stitch and um i just wanted to show it and then finally you may have seen this on their app this is my flower garden which is sort of a companion piece for american homes and it also is like a sort of in-between uh, piece because they are now designing, I think it's called American Gardens. And this would sort of be like an in-between. The design, I think, is, is brilliant. I, I really adore it. And again, you have so many ways of stitching this. I was thinking this would make an awesome drum. So... You know, you can <laughs> stitch it. You can just frame it. I mean, um, I know a customer of mine is stitching it um, on banding. And she's going to put it on an apron. So, you know, again, there's multiple things you can do with this. You could just stitch one of the flowers here and put that on a card to, for somebody. Or make it into a little scissor fob. I really, really think this is adorable. So I will link the designs in the description box box below so that it's easy for you to find and do look on the website um, we have quite a few of their designs in the shop and there's like a kind of catalog page on my website that I will link where you can see what else they've done um, they have really have a good eye for designing so I'm very excited that I agree to give it another try in 2021 I hope that by then um, we have conquered this whole COVID thing and that the retreat can take place as we planned it because I think it'll be a great day. They're very approachable, very nice to talk to. Um, yeah, it would be just a lot of fun. So that was, I guess you could call it my haul. Um, plans, let's talk about plans. Like I said, I have three weeks of vacation time coming up and um, I always have a tendency when my, um, you know, when I'm getting close to my vacation that I have like, well, this or, you know, depending, I have like this much that I want to do in my vacation time. And usually I end up doing this, which is fine. I always say as long as I enjoy what I'm doing and you can do some different things from, you know, your work life, so to speak. So, um... I already told you I'm planning to stitch on average three hours a day and I will keep track of that because uh, part of me really <laughs> enjoys keeping track of stuff. So I think that's kind of easy to do. 
And um, since I missed out on Jolly July, I didn't stitch that much in July and I finished some whips and I didn't start anything Christmassy apart now from the Rudolph chart by La Di Da and uh, Prairie Schooler Santa. I have some more Christmassy charts that I might want to stitch. Uh, but then I'm also drawn to stitch some fall things as well. And I know myself, there's no way that I can do both. Um, or I might pick one project, you know, like a fall project and a Christmas project. Mostly, I think September will be, it won't be sampler September. It won't be Santa September. Um, several September? I don't know. I haven't found the right alliteration yet. So if you know one, um, write it in the comments. I'd love to read it. Um, I do plan on um, putting a video together with all my whips, like I said, the big whip bag. Um, I think that will be fun. And I also thought it would be fun to show some older pieces that I've stitched over time. I will check, uh, because that's what I need to do before I can film that, is to make sure that I know whether the chart is still available or not. It's not very nice to entice you with a lovely piece and say oh you can probably find a chart and then it turns out to be out of print um but there are some pieces that i'd love to show you um and i might do some more european designers like a spotlight on a european designer every video or every other video just you know however it works out so that's it for now um i'm going back to the kitchen and i'm going to start you know putting orders together and getting them out the door. I want to say thank you for everybody who left a comment. It's so much appreciated. I love reading it. Um, thank you for new subscribers. I hope you enjoy what you're seeing over here. And also thank you to everybody who sends in orders. It means the world to me. It's uh, with the shop only being open by appointment. It's a totally different ball game this year. And I know a lot of shops have already said that. It's so much appreciated that a lot of you are thinking of us, are, you know, stitching as much as you do. And I really hope that um, we will all get through this. Um, I hope you're well. I hope you're staying safe, that you keep your distance where needed, and that you enjoy what's left of the summer. I know some people are having really high temperatures. I think they're probably laughing about our 35 degrees when it's over 100 or 110 in the US. Um, but still, we have to get through this summer and um, enjoy your stitching. I think that's what I heard a lot of people say, that our stitching is what kept us sane during this period. Uh, I think as stitchers, we're more used to stay at home and practice our hobby or our passion. And that made it maybe a little bit easier for us. But then, you know, there's people that I haven't seen in a very long time and I would love to, but it's just not a good decision. So do whatever you can, stay safe, stay healthy, and have incredibly much fun with your stitching. See you next time, bye.